What is up guys? Welcome on back to TK's Garage. We're back here with another video. I'm on the road. I am down here in uh, Titusville, Florida. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already know what happened over there. Hashtag Hot Tub Boys. Some of y'all have been following me for a long time. I already know what went down. That said, we're going to go ahead and get into this. We're going to get out of here and we're going to go meet up with some other people from the G30 USA Facebook group. gentleman by the name of Full Bolt On Impact. Yeah, this is going to be a heavy BMW video. <laughs> Don't pay me no mind. She's a little dusty right now, but we're gonna get her cleaned up. We're gonna get her cleaned up. She needs some gas. No, this is not typical TK where I run my cars down to no gas. I'm not doing that. I haven't been doing that with this car. I just happened to travel and then roll around last night. But we're gonna get her sorted out, get her some gas. I went the wrong way, didn't I? Yeah, whatever. And then we're gonna hit the road, man. And we're going to go link up with some awesome BMW people. And maybe we'll address this stupid seatbelt thing that happened on the car. And uh, I don't know what order you're seeing these videos in, but I'm sure you're seeing the, the uh, I got stopped by the police video coming soon. So stay tuned for that. But let me, uh, let's get some gas, hit the road, and we'll come back. Speaking of Beamers, there's a 323 CI. And it looks like he wide-bodied that joint. You know, he M3'd it, so to speak. It had the M3 front. The whole front is, like, primer gray. So. But, it actually, I mean, I mean, the paint needs to be done. It's faded on the top, the roof, everywhere else. But I think once that thing had a paint job, it might not look bad, actually. It's got the quad pipes, quad tips. Look at that, man. That thing's clean. I mean, it still needs a paint job. Now, you know I had to go to M mode because I know <laughs> this kid's going to try to run here in a minute. And I want to, uh, we want to see the full experience out of this car. Well, maybe not. Oh, he's moving. He got it going. He got it running. <laughs> he got that thing moving, man. So we got about a 30 minute drive. Uh, for you guys that were asking, I've had some people ask about the tent, if I saw any issues. And the only issue I've seen so far is this one little spot, which probably doesn't show up on camera, which is right here. Um, and I think if I put the window down some and push that out, it'll probably be fine. But it looks like I got two bubbles right there, there and there. So I'm gonna try to get that situated or get that air out of there and hopefully it's straight but uh yeah we got about a 30 minute run so let's go ahead and hit it and then uh you know let the bmw madness begin g30 2017 i've had a lot of questions about how to take this out and these are the tools that you need a dremel tool cutter suppliers a flathead a pick or this big guy here. So the first thing you do is put the car into diagnostic mode. Whoa, you can <laughs> cut that guy out there. All right. Uh, do you have the key? Yep. Get this guy here, put her in the seat. And to put her into diagnostic mode. You gotta push like what, four times? Yep, one, two, three. So when you put into diagnostic mode, the actuators, uh, open. the shutter will open. Ah. So it gives you some space to work a little bit better and you don't have to force it open and jam the motor and clip the teeth. So the very next thing you do, or they would just close. <laughs> they should open back up. There they are. That's crazy. BMW. The very next step is to take the grill's off. Once again, start here, flip sideways, start here. 
All you do is pull very ever so gently. And then just wiggle, 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 wiggle. Just like that. These are, that's so much better design on these grills than they used to be. Oh yes, so much easier too. And you can actually take them on and off many times and the clips won't snap off. Another headache that I got rid of. So the very next thing is to get the Dremel tool. And if you look right in here, you'll see that there is an arm that shoots from here and I can actually move it with my finger we have to cut the arm head off here. And if you come around this way, you'll see this is the other arm that holds it. The actuators right over here come up. You see it from the bottom. This is the other arm that you have to just cut off. And when you cut these off, these will just start to wiggle back and forth because they'll be very loose. All right. So now, you just let me see that real quick. Just take a closer look here. To cut the arms off, but the problem is the Dremel tool is not big enough so it won't fit all the way through here to reach the arm so you can cut it and also the next step after that is you would have to cut these little things individually so they can all come out from this guy that holds it in so this is why a lot of folks just decide to use this guy it's the same method it's going to cut the same exact way but this has longer teeth so it can reach underneath the actuator and actually just cut. So it makes it a lot easier to reach in and cut with it. All you gotta do is come around here. That guy's gonna go this way. So the first thing you do is you cut up here and down here. So this starts to play loose a little bit so you can move around the motor so the arm will swing around this way so you can see it and cut it straight through. Yeah, ready for this? Yep. <laughs> All right, scary as can be, but this is how it works. that guy loose if you come around this way you'll see that the arm is a lot more exposed now there's two things you can do you can either cut the arm which is right there or remove that clip that holds the arm through together so if you remove that clip with some pliers you should be able to just squeeze that out and all these will literally just fall out of place so now well, we're gonna cut this guy here so the motor is loose. All right, that was easy.
how it moves from over here, because I'm literally just holding on to the arm from that side. So, reach around. Oh. Simply just crack. One arm done. So once you cut the arm, the rest of them just flap. That's it. <laughs> Dead meat. <laughs> so there you go. So if you come down right here, you'll see these guys that are just sticking out. Really annoying. Don't right. try to pry them out. If you look, there's a little like key so all you got to do is like turn it like a key towards you wherever the hole is and pull up I like come out there you go simple as that wow so now they're all free flowing here and that once i cut this guy off here these will flow too because now they're still connected to the motor all right so the next step is the little just cut this guy right there maybe this way you view a little bit better because you can Angle it easier. Okay, there we go. Almost out. This is where these will come in handy. So you can get to those extra tight spots to you can't reach. Okay. Come on. So, this is good that this happened. So, let me see this. Sometimes, it's gonna be just a little difficult to cut that guy that I was going at so you can get to the arm where that clip is. So, if you get to that point, the flathead, if you come close, and you get right under that clip, get under it, get under it, get under it, Turn, 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 turn. And try just to pop that little clip out so the arm can just literally fall out of place, out of socket. Okay.
face it out. a little bit more space. Interesting, you don't have a camera. Nope. Very interesting. That's what I, uh, yours has one, right? Yeah. I don't know, I, I don't know if they replaced it or somebody removed it or it didn't come with one, but I thought with this spec that it should have one. Also, I don't know if I'm not going crazy. This hasn't been touched or removed or anything? Mm-mm. No? Okay. A little off, it's weird. It's huh. called tolerances. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer over here. You like tighter tolerances than you. <laughs> Say so. Got it. So if you run into that problem, the other simple solution to do is turn the car off so the actuator will actually close. So if you see here, there's no life because this arm we already cut off because it was easy to get to. This arm right here was hiding behind this guy. So now that you can see it and it's right there, just reach up on there with your handy dandy. Make sure you get all the way around. Boom. Cut off the arm. You can literally see them flat. <laughs> literally. And then <laughs> yep. they just die. So now we're going to remove this entire system once it comes off and then you see these arms yeah this is the number one problem that people make when cutting these off they cut the arms off and call it that no when you turn when the motor turns inside when you turn on the car on and off the motors get stuck behind this guy and you throw a check engine light and eventually down the road you're going to have to replace this motor that's right back here because it's tried to spin so many times and now the teeth are worn out. Uh -huh. So you're gonna throw a check engine light and you would have to replace just the motor. Luckily for us, they're not above 150 bucks to maybe 200 bucks. So right. you can just replace that. But once we remove these guys, we'll go ahead and go with the- the Smaller clippers. Yeah, yeah. and just remove these arms. So we'll throw an orange coat. So now, Sweet. the fun part. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> take all that anger out that I just put you through. Cut, we'll just get all those pieces later on. Here, then just cut that bottom. Two, no remove those keys later on when we're done. Just turn in place and turn them off. So, this guy, this guy here, and this guy. So, once you add them all off, nice. Voila. So they come out in one piece. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> That's crazy. It's insane. The engineering is kind of amazing. And then the keys, you just turn. I'll show you on this one. It's a lot easier. Turn and pull. Turn and pull. And there it is. These guys. This thing's going to run way cooler now. Simple as that. Now we do this side. <laughs> This is why I like to use these versus the Dremel. You're, you're going to cut regardless. Right. So, you might as well just make your life so much easier. Uh, 
I mean, a branch trimmer looks like it's way quicker anyway than having to deal with a damn Dremel. Yep. Inside here eventually and rattle inside by your radiator. Yep. Come on, little fella. I know you don't want to part with it. Alright. Uh, there we go. All these are out. Now I can get to do all my Yeah, I'm gonna put some uh covers, covers. over those braces, yeah. Nice, Cause now you can actually see them. You know? <laughs> so yeah. much better in my opinion. You know, because people were like, are you going to put lights in your engine bay and all this no. other shit? And I was like, no, man, because no. one, you wouldn't be able to see it. The shit's closed all the time anyway. Yeah. So I was like, no, man. <laughs> it is true. And then, yeah, the little piece that fell back here. Just don't forget to move over with the light. And you will find pieces back there, so. <laughs> this guy here, this guy here. All right. So, the very next step is to just remove the arms. So the arms, you just got to go in. Oh, one second. <laughs> All right. So with the arms, we're going to needle nose, these guys here. And if you come around this way, you're going to see the clip. This is the back end of the clip. Thankfully, they made it easier for us. So if you can somehow get this guy to clip into that white little clip from the back. It'll just fall and then you'll be able to just pull it off. Take that on off. So all we gotta do is try to squeeze back there. Okay. Squeeze and kind of push out. Back clip starting to come out a little bit. There you go. So when you just push it out from the other side, you pull it. It's gonna be a little tricky. So here it is. Uh and the arm, the guy that people forget about. <laughs> Where's Waldo? Yeah, right. Jesus. It's back here. Yeah. Here's the arm. Huh. So just got to cut here first and then push the little clip through here. And the arm will just release. So now, every time you turn your car on, the motor will do its job, just turn in place, but there will be nothing to turn. And in my opinion, that gives it more life too. Yeah, there's, there's no, no resistance. <laughs> <laughs> it is a win-win. Yeah. It's a win-win. So, same process with this fella here. You just push the little clip out, and this guy will just literally come right out. Thank you for the light. Ah, no. Yes, this is. Push. Back here. Push that clip. Uh, just start the car and let's make sure there is no check engine. All right. 
BMW G30 USA. Uh, I picked up a lot of things from you guys. So I just want to say thank you and shout out to everybody that contributes and posts. And to TK Garage. Big facts, big because I would have I only met you if I didn't if I, we didn't make each other through the, yeah, through the Facebook group. You know, yeah. Big big thanks to you for letting me do this to your car, man. So no, I appreciate it. Oh, I can't wait till I, I can't wait till the video comes out so that everybody can go and subscribe to the channel thank and blow it up because there's so you. many people. I, I'm trying to remember the last guy. That, so these, the easiest way guys to put them on is to start with the bottom, line it up, push it in fairly here, and then start from inwards out. Ah, come on, ain't hard to get. All right, here we go. So inwards out, always the easiest way. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. No. No, no, no. Go back a step. There you go. It's okay, TK. If anything, we have a parts car right over there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is nicer than mine. No, no. Hold See on. It. I love the color, bro. That Yours is nicer, nicer than mine. <laughs> Bottoms. I don't think you've ever struggled this much playing them in. There you go. There you go. Solid there. Yeah, now you can see straight through. None of that Bro. heavy crap. In the yeah, man. If you do logging, check and see your uh, attempts. I bet they're lower. I know they're going to be lower. It's different. Not only say because if it runs a little warmer. Like with the computer, you get better gas mileage, but I didn't buy this car for, I mean, I didn't buy it for gas mileage. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Major, major, major salute to Full Bolt on Impact um, over on Facebook. And I'm going to link his YouTube in the description down below. I know he has his own uh, video that he's posted here with his own angle, which might even be a lot better than mine. If you guys want to see how that process works, go check it out. But uh, yeah, ridiculous. I also have a video for you guys coming um, with me driving that car. And when I tell you, I can't wait to get this tune done on my BMW. Like I can't wait for the dongle to get in so I can just pay the 300 bucks and get this tune because I think after the stage one, now he does have a stage two with a high pressure fuel pump tune. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go that hard. I don't need that much. If I just had a little bit more, you know, if I was somewhere in the high fours, you know, like right at around 500 horsepower, I think I'd be good. But man, driving that car today, his thing is an absolute beast, man. Beast. And I got a video coming for you guys on that. Here soon but this was just a quick video well I say quick video uh, showing you guys how to delete the active I don't know what the hell they call those air dampening or whatever the hell it is the little flaps in the front of the car um, and I can tell you just looking you know at the active monitoring when I was driving the temps are way cooler on the car and I know some people say well BMW didn't intend for that they're supposed to be running warmer. Okay, whatever. I don't care. I've dealt enough with coolant issues and expansion tanks blowing up and everything else that I'm not going to do that. You can do that. I'm not. There's a reason why the M5 is wide open and they don't have any of that BS. I don't need it. So, you know, putting the cold air intake and some of the other things I'm going to do on it, it's going to keep that car way cooler. 
And it's probably fine for somebody who's gonna keep their car stock. I'm not. I'm trying to push this B58. You know, like I'm gonna start with just a stage one, but we're gonna get to a point where I get these downpipes, these catless downpipes and everything else. Like when I tell you that I wanna get this car, this B58, when I say I wanna build the fastest B58 in the country, I'm serious about it because this motor can just take, just take and take and just takes whatever you throw at it, man. And I, and driving his today and he's got nitrous on it. I mean, we didn't use the nitrous, but you'll just wait for that video. You're going to be like, damn. Anyways, maybe I'll post a little teaser for you here at the end. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Major shout out to him uh, and his amazing wife and uh, major shout out to the whole G30 USA Facebook group as well. I'm going to link that in the description below. I'm also going to link um, his uh, YouTube channel. Go subscribe. Because you know what? The information and the stuff, this dude is fixing people's BMWs and taking care of some of these issues and coding and stuff for free. Like, that, that's, that's crazy, okay? You got to appreciate people like that in the BMW community. So go subscribe to his channel. Just go do it. It's a, it's a fun time. You're going to enjoy it. And you're going to learn some cool stuff. Because I learned so much about my car today. It's not even funny. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Perfect.